Today we're going to be looking at a brand new plugin available on aescripts.com called Mask Prompter. I've been using this plugin for about a week now and it really is game changing if you do a lot of rotoscoping and masking work in After Effects. This plugin comes in a few different varieties, Mac, Windows, and Windows GPU, which requires an NVIDIA graphics card, but it is much faster than the other versions. For this demonstration, we'll be using the Windows GPU version running on an NVIDIA RTX 3080. Let's hop into After Effects and take a look at what this plugin can do. We have a few examples here of how to use this plugin, and then we're going to take a look at a cool way to utilize this plugin within your footage. In our first example, we just have a slow drone shot that's filming these two boats floating in the ocean, and we're going to use the Mask Prompter plugin to change the color of the water that they're floating in, make it a bit deeper of a blue. So we're going to go to the beginning of our timeline, we're going to select our footage, we're going to go up to our Effects and Presets panel and search for Mask Prompter. And we're going to take our Mask Prompter effect and drop it onto our footage. And that opens up our effect controls. For this example, we're going to be looking at points, so we'll close up these other two. Points allow you to select an area of your footage, and Mask Prompter uses artificial intelligence to automatically detect all of the connected areas of that footage. So we're going to activate our first point, and we're going to take our point selection tool here, and we're just going to select this ocean section down here. And it creates this overlay so you can see exactly what it's affecting. If we play through this, you can see that even as we play through the footage, Mask Prompter stays locked on to that ocean section. We get a little bit of this second section up here, and we get some dropouts here. So this might not be a perfect place to put this point. So we'll just move our point up into an area that's more uniform in color. And then as we scroll through here, we can see that it stays locked into this first section of the ocean. And we're also gonna change this back section. So we'll activate our second point here and we're gonna take our point control and we're gonna drop it onto our second section of the ocean here. Now you can see that it keeps locked on to both sections of the ocean. There's some areas in here that start to flicker around the boat and same with this boat back here, but we're gonna go back in with another effect and we're gonna refine that a little bit. So this is a good start and it has all of our ocean selected. We're gonna close up our effects here. We're gonna duplicate our layer. And on the bottom layer, we're going to delete our mask prompter effect. We're gonna to go to our top footage and we're gonna change the output from overlay to on transparent. And that gives us a transparent background that we can use to affect the footage underneath. And we're gonna refine this a little bit. So we're gonna to go to our effects and presets panel and search for refine soft matte. And we're gonna apply that to our footage. And we're gonna crank up the feathering and we're gonna crank up the smoothing a little bit. So before and after. And then if we turn our footage on underneath, everything seems to come together all right. And then we're just gonna go to our top footage and we're gonna go back up to effects and presets. And we're gonna drop a hue and saturation color correction plugin on here. And we're gonna darken up the ocean a little bit. And there's still some areas that you can sort of see in between these boats here, but if you're just using it for a quick shot, I think it does a pretty good job of isolating the areas you wanna work with really quickly and allowing you to affect them. We're gonna to go to our second shot here, and this is gonna be an example of how to use the points feature on some locked off footage. So we're gonna select our layer, go to effects and presets, and we're gonna search for mask prompter again. We'll drop that onto our footage and we'll activate our first point and we're just gonna drop it right on the cow. And same as before, we're gonna duplicate our layer. We're gonna delete mask prompter from the layer underneath and our top layer, we're gonna set the output from overlay to mask. And this gives us a black and white mat to work with. And if we scan through our footage, we can see that it stays pretty locked onto the cow. What we're gonna do now is we're going to go up to layer, new. We're gonna add an adjustment layer. And on our adjustment layer, we're going to add a saturation effect. And we're gonna drop our saturation all the way down. And we're going to use our mask prompter layer as a luma mat. So we're gonna take our track mat pick whip that we have here. If you don't have it, this is version of After Effects 2023, and it's a relatively new addition. So we can pick whip our track mat to our mat layer. And we wanna make sure that this is on a luminance map instead of an alpha map. And just like that, we have a desaturated subject. We can also go up to our adjustment layer and we can adjust the lightness. And we could also stack effects on here. So if we wanted to add a blur to just the 
cow. You can add a Gaussian blur and affect it that way. And it gives you a chance to create some really unique and interesting effects. Our third example here is going to use the boxes feature in Mask Prompter. So here we have footage of fish swimming in an aquarium. And we're going to use the box feature to select and mask just one of these fish out from the background. So we'll select our footage. And the first thing we want to do is create a rectangular mask. So we're going to go up to our rectangle tool. We're going to go down to our footage and we're going to select this fish right over here. And while we have our rectangle tool out and we still have our mouse button pressed down, we can press N on the keyboard and that changes the mask type to none. So we can still see all of the footage underneath. So we have our fish selected here and we're just going to roughly follow this fish around. So we're gonna go forward one second, take our mask, move it over the fish, go forward another second, adjust the mask again until we reach the end of the clip. And this is where the really cool AI that's part of Mask Prompter comes in. So we can add our Mask Prompter effect. We can go to Boxes and we can select our Mask 1. And that automatically highlights our fish. We can see that it selects a little bit of the coral behind it. So we're just going to adjust our mask down a little bit. So we're just selecting the fish. We're just going to move forward a couple keyframes and spot check each of these keyframes to make sure that our fish is the only thing being selected. And we scrub through our footage and we can see where we need to make these adjustments. And same as in our other examples, we can duplicate our layer, delete mask prompter from the bottom layer, and we can just add maybe a glow effect on here after we change the output from overlay to on transparent. We'll duplicate our glow effect and really make this fish sparkle. Maybe we can add a hue and saturation effect there too. And now we're going to take a look at an example of how you could use Mask Prompter to create some really unique effects for the video that you're working on. Here we have a video of a girl walking towards the beach. What I think we want to do is change the surfboard here and kind of give it a glowing, shimmering effect. Typically what you would use for something like this is the Roto Brush tool, or you would add a mask around the entire surfboard and track it for every frame to make sure you precisely follow the movements. Neither of these methods are incredibly complex, but they can both be very time consuming depending on the type of footage you're working with. We're going to be using Mask Prompter to do this in just a few steps. Let's first select our footage and we're going to add Mask Prompter to it. The option we're going to use today is Boxes. This uses rectangular paths to automatically detect what's inside the frame of the path, analyze that, and then create a mask from that. So we select our mask tool. And first we're going to mask the surfboard. If we click and drag, we create a mask. If we press N on our keyboard, it sets the mask mode to none. So then we can see the rest of our image. And what we want to do with this mask is make sure that it covers the surfboard throughout the entirety of the clip. So we'll add a keyframe at the beginning here. We'll go forward one second. We'll adjust our mask points accordingly to make sure that we're still tracking the surfboard. We'll go forward a little bit more. We'll adjust our mask points again. Same thing, a little bit further. And we'll just add a mask keyframe at the end. So our surfboard comes out of the mask a little bit right there. We can just adjust that. And that looks pretty good. All right, so if we go up to our boxes, go to path and select mask one, we can see that it adds an overlay there right on top of the surfboard. And we have a little bit of her shoulder in here. So we'll go to our first keyframe and we'll just adjust this mask down so it's only covering the surfboard. And you can also see that some of the fins that are on the surfboard are not being masked out entirely. So a way to remedy that is we're going to turn off our mask prompter for now. And we're just going to add a different mask for each of these fins and we're going to track it using the built-in After Effects tracker. So we'll select this back fin here, draw a mask, press N on our keyboard to make sure we can see our entire image. We're going to right click on our mask and go to track mask. 
That's going to open up our tracking panel. We're going to track the position, scale, and rotation, and just hit play. And let that go through and track onto our back fin here. And we're going to do the same for these other two fins and then this logo here that's in the middle of the surfboard. Now we have our masks tracked to our fins, our surfboard, and our logo. And those are all tracking on there very nicely. We're going to go up to our boxes and we're going to select our masks from these drop down menus. So we're going to select mask two, three, four, and five. It does only give you five options for the amount of masks you can use, but a simple way around that is to duplicate your footage and track additional points and then composite afterwards. So we have our five masks selected. We're gonna turn our mask prompter back on and that is a much cleaner mask on our surfboard. And we got a little bit of her arm in there so we are gonna adjust this first mask that we have. Bring that in. And bring it down. So this gives us a nice clean mask to work with. We can also adjust our edge enhancement. I usually just do small because it makes the smallest amount of distortion. And we can always adjust our overlay strength so we can see the original image if we want to. Now we can add some effects. So we're going to go to output and we're gonna change this to on transparent. And that just gives us our surfboard layer on a transparent background. We can toggle our transparency grid. And what we can do is take our original footage, we can duplicate it and drop it to the bottom and delete our mask prompter plugin. Now we can go to our footage with the mask prompter on it and we can make our adjustments here. So let's add a hue and saturation adjustment and we'll make this a green surfboard. And we're also gonna add a little bit of a glow. So we're gonna add our base glow. And then we're gonna duplicate our base glow, change our glow radius from 20 to something like 150. And to get the shimmering effect that you saw in the example clip, I'm gonna use an effect called fractal noise. So we're gonna add a solid layer. I'm gonna add fractal noise. And we're gonna change this to dynamic progressive, spline. We're gonna crank up our contrast and lower our brightness a little bit so we get a lot of detail. We're gonna change our complexity to something like two and we're going to go to transform and we're going to scale this up just a little bit we're going to go down to evolution and this is how we get the animation we're just going to do the time expression so time times we'll do 144 to make it nice and fast and now we can take our solid layer with our fractal noise and use our mask prompter layer as a track mat and we can change our blending mode to add and when we make a track mat of a layer, After Effects turns it off automatically, but we still want this to be visible, so we're going to turn it back on. And now when we play the footage, we get a nice shimmering effect on the surfboard. 